Wow, Justin joining our call. I thought I might for a change, even though <laughs> you put it as slightly unsociable hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Oh, you're not the only one late here late, so. <laughs> true, true. Hey, folks. Hey, Steve. Hello. Darren, good to see you. Let me throw the HackMD in the chat. Looks like we have a popular call this week. That's because I built the cloud joined. <laughs> <laughs> For a second, Darren, I thought you were almost in an airplane. It almost looked like one of those overhead cubbies above your head there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's, I see that it's like an angle or something. Yeah, no, I'm in a closet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You could come out. We don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Too too many kids at home. So I set up my office in a closet. Was it at least a walk-in closet? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a mass. You know, it's, it's funny because I actually I I worked at home before a couple of years ago, um, and I also worked in the closet, but it was a much smaller one. So this time I just I upgraded to the master bedroom closet. Does that mean you're responsible for folding laundry? Well, no, there's no laundry in here. <laughs> <laughs> we have to repurpose the, uh, <laughs> yeah. Phil, is that a, Phil, is that a uh, virtual background or is that a real background? That is really my office with a gentle blur applied. So you can't tell if there's a, if it's messy or not. Uh, you might want to check your blur factor. <laughs> we can't read Gentle. the blacks, but. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I can switch now. Now that Amy's here, I'll, I've got the KubeCon. Oh, yes. Here. Those were actually a hit, my god. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, the uh, we've got some Starbucks backgrounds here to fake everyone out that Virginia's open for business or something. Yes, I've got the blur on the floating right. mask on your face. Oh yeah, yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> I love blurry cucumber. <laughs> here we can. Pick, we can I have linked in chat where you can get your own virtual background. Yeah, GitHub. Put them up on the ambassadors thing for GitHub. So many options. Some of them um, are even like 3D, like you can be in like the lobby and things. Oh. Yeah, I have that here somewhere. Yeah, I'm at KubeCon. I did not realize these were going to be so popular. <laughs> All right, good to know. Uh, well, Darren came all the way to attend this call, so we should probably give him some time. <laughs> uh, so HackMD in the chat for those that aren't regulars. Uh, it's an easy place to add yourself to attendance and follow the agenda. Um, and so we have a few things. Darren reached out, uh, I guess, yeah, a week ago. And um, he's here to complain about multi-architecture images because yeah. we, couldn't think, we couldn't think of a better place. So we said the OCI. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know if this will, yeah, I don't know. So this is a generic, uh, here's some pain points and no particular solutions, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I made a couple notes, like, let me, let me share my screen. Is that possible? Let's see. It. Um, uh, 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 let's see. I don't know this works. Um, oh, wait, I think I shared. Okay, this will work. Um, <clears throat> so basically kind of boils down to like three kind of areas that are kind of like pain points. Um, so uh, uh, before I get into the specifics of those, 
um, like just to give context is like, so like at Rancher, we, we support like primarily it's just like Intel and, and, and uh, ARM64 uh, for various projects. So it's like Rancher, Longhorn, um, Rancher OS, K3OS. Uh, and then for like, for K3S, we also do like ARMv7, basically just Raspberry Pi. Um, so, I mean, I think we have like a decent amount of experience of doing, trying to do multi-arc. Um, but one of the things like with Rancher is like, it encompasses so many projects. I mean, we're probably talking about like around a hundred different Docker images across so many different projects. Um, it's not like we have like a, uh, like the legacy of having a lot of consistency between everything. It's like we've developed a consistent pipeline, but the projects are all kind of different and built in slightly different ways and, and whatnot. Um, so I think we have a decent amount of experience of doing this. Um, and it's not easy. And just from, from what I've seen is trying to get other people to support multi-arc is also not easy. Um, and so these are just some of like the gotchas or whatever. Um, so the first one, like I'll just read for those three and then uh, I'll go into detail on each one. But like basically the first one just has to do with the fact that like the manifest is one like immutable thing that kind of joins together all, like, all the architectures. Um, so it's kind of a step that has to be done at the end. Uh, the, the second thing is like push pull tag oddities. I can go into detail of those, but like there's just a lot of odd behavior you know, this one you could probably say is like, oh, this is tooling issues. But honestly, like, I don't even think it's tooling issues because it's not exactly sure what the right behavior is. Like we really became very evident when we started trying to implement K3C, which was like our own little weird container runtime experiment of like, well, what's the right behavior for all these manifest things? Like what's the right hash I should be showing? Um, and kind of the last point there is, is the digest that you're looking at. It's like, it's, kind of inconsistent and odd which you know it's like what digest gets printed and displayed for a lot of things is it the manifest or the image and so if you're looking at like you know the output from like a a pull operation or a push operation or um a runtime like a you know, docker inspect or cri output it's like which hash is it it's it's always kind of odd um but <clears throat> Um, I'll kind of come back to those points, but like, so a couple of things that like we kind of learned in CI is like how to address this because we had to do so many different projects is like, like first off, like the Docker build is like really, it's just, it's one step in a larger process. So anything, anything that kind of looks at is like assuming a solution where it's like, I build all architectures at once is not super feasible. Like that's just not very like, you know, I think like kind of like Buildex does it this style of like I build and I do all the architectures at once and then I can like assemble that all together. Like it's just not really feels feasible for a lot of projects. It's significantly easier to build on Intel, to build on ARM, like to do these operations. Um, and so like the second point there is like cross compiling sucks. It's like, it's so difficult to cross compile just in general, that's a well-known thing. Um, but because like the architectures are so like ARM is so fast these days, it's like, it, you know, those are the primary architectures at least we're supporting and we see it's, um, you know, important, you know, Phil, I'll throw in their uh, power PC is, <laughs> but that one, you know, that one's fast too. But like, but the point is, is like people are, it's, it's just way easier to build on the actual architecture. And so what we've kind of come up with and like what we've seen this repeated over and over again in other pro projects or whatever, is if you want to do multi-arc, it's really like you just take the pipeline you have and you just run it on the architecture. So you don't cross compile, you just run multiple versions of your pipeline and you build kind of everything in parallel. But that's like where the big, the, the annoying part comes with the manifest is if you do everything in parallel, you kind of need one step at the end to join it all back together to create the manifest. And I know like it's possible to amend the, the manifest, but it's like, that's kind of racy because like you have to pull, modify, push it back. And then also it's just the thing of like, you don't necessarily, if you want to, like the end result is to tag, you don't necessarily want to be tagging a manifest that you're then modif like you keep basically modifying that tag. Um, so we, like all of our CI pipeline, like kind of what we do is everything's kicked off through a GitHub of, 
when we want to do a release, we create a tag in GitHub, um, and then that will kick off CI. Then CI will run in parallel across um, all the architectures. And then when all the architectures are done, we then have one step, which will then create the manifest and push that up there. But that, like that last step of like kind of joining together is where a lot of CI systems can't really do that. And also the other thing is like, it's hard to find one single CI system that will do all architectures, um, namely Windows. Like, you know, it's like you might be able to get, um, you might be able to get like, you know, Linux, Intel and ARM in the same CI system, but then Windows is always a different beast. Um, so if you want to support Windows, you know, so it's like you're usually dealing, so it's like we've, we currently use Drone, um, which gave us a lot of flexibility and, and, and honestly, like we'd like to move off to Drone to something else, but because of this one little thing of like how we have to kind of structure the, the builds all in parallel and then kind of do one step when they're all done at the end makes it a little harder to just move to some other off the shelf CI thing. Um, so I just wanted to like point that out. Like, like this is like just like, just what we found is the easiest ways to build in CI and do multi-architecture uh, is really just in parallel and on the actual, like do, running full pipelines in parallel on the actual architecture. Um, so that's mostly like why like the first point ends up being like a hard to deal with. Um, I don't know how you guys would like, I think like maybe I'll just go through these other two and then I'll just open up and we can, we can discuss and not just like talk it further. Um, so the, the thing with like push pull tag, like we run into this a lot where it's like um, basically like if you pull a manifest, um, it depends on the Docker version, but I just checked yesterday. If you pull a manifest, it'll say like the digest of the manifest and then the image gets reported as the digest of the manifest. But then if you tag it and push it, you'll actually tag the actual Docker image and then it will push a different thing. Like it'll push the image. So like, this is a common thing that we've, we've seen where it's like people, um, like our developers will screw it up where it's like, cause all of our images are multi-arc where it's like, oh, like tag this one is this label. And basically nobody can ever figure out how to tag a manifest. Um, they end up tagging the Intel image, not the, the, you know, the actual manifest. So then our tags get screwed up. Darren, um, when you say manifest, you're actually mean the, the index, right? The multi. Sorry, sorry, the manifest list. Yeah, sorry. Okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah. just making sure. Yeah, sorry, the manifest list. Yeah, wrong word. Um, yeah, so it'll, it'll actually tag the manifest list. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and I already kind of went over what, what digest. So it's like, there's all these to kind of, so it's kind of like, so the, the, it kind of goes, it goes into two points of like, one, the, the one thing to point to everything is kind of hard. Um, the, the second is that like we've effectively created like with manifest list a pointer and it kind of deal, comes with all the problems of the pointer is like depending on the use case it's like do you actually want a reference to that or do you want a thing that it's pointing to and like you see this odd like these complexities get like manifested in like let's say the pull code in container d it's like resolving these lists and stuff has weird side effects um because like you want to pull, but you only want one architecture. But then if you pull and you only want one architecture, then you end up with a manifest list that then points to references of a different architecture you didn't want to pull. So you can now have an incomplete chain on disk. So there's there's all these kind of weird audits. But like at the end of the day, it's like really what people expect and want is like if you just like tag and push on one architecture and then you pull on another, it's not found. It's like, that's like kind of the user experience people get, <laughs> they, they want it to happen, but it's like not like that, you know, like today it's really, you know, the, the you know, you have to do the second step of the man, like doing the manifest or manifest tool or whatever. Um, but then it's kind of like, this is all kind of, tags are all in the same namespace, you know, it's like, if you if you look at parallels of any other uh, packaging system, you know RPMs and Debian's or whatever, is they they effectively have separate namespaces, uh, different contexts for each architecture. So it's like it's very obvious to, to most people is like, well yeah that one exists in ARM and it doesn't exist in Intel because they're like completely separate repositories or or whatever. Um, 
but we've kind of with the manifest lists uh it's you know put everything kind of in the same place and you know it's like if there was something like architecture specific tags that would probably be cool um if there was some way to do this client side uh you know resolving it you know not client side but like having some behavior where we look you know look for something it's just like i i don't i'm i question the at the end of the day the value of the one artifact to point to multiple architectures and i assume that probably has a lot to do with signing and whatnot um but like those benefits have yet to come like actually be seen in the wild because there's really no flow yet for like at least in the kubernetes world of how to validate all this stuff and signatures and you know that's what like notary v2 and stuff i guess are doing so that's kind of like my basic points i don't know if any of that's useful or helpful anyone wants to comment on anything um one thing about signing is that it turned out the other day that no one agrees whether we should be signing the manifest list or the individual images at all so actually this turned out to be an open question last week that we hadn't really discussed because it, it turns out that a, a bunch of people are expecting to sign images and another bunch of people are expecting to sign manifest lists. <laughs> yeah, it, it, and I just, I would almost, I would, because I just think, because it's not even clear to me, because um, I just look at what what's the, the the behavior today is like everything just really relies on a on a tag and like i and you know you put that like in your definition your manifest like i don't even understand how signing is going to fit into all this um but again i would prefer to sign the images because like again that's going to make more sense to me because even if i don't sign the images like if i sign the manifest list i have to sign the image too because i can't create the manifest list without knowing that the images are signed. Um, because again, like I'm not gonna do it all at the same time. They're gonna be done at different times and on different systems. So the images are gonna be signed if I care about signing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the notary stuff is like a whole nother thing and it, it's a good question. But what I think uh, what was interesting is your last slides and what your expected thing was Docker pull a particular tag and it would just work on the various architectures and that obviously is the goal of what index is supposed to be for but is your pro point that it's just too hard to get there so it's not working well, well so it's it's like the behavior is that basically if i push a tag on an architecture then that tag oh. exists for that architecture not like the polling so so this is the thing is like technically like manifest lists are working fine from the consumer side right now like that's kind of the like you know for the most part that work it's it's all on the kind of the publishing building side that's yep. the complexity that's the problem yeah and then yeah, because yeah. it's so, so complex what we've seen is various people do things differently so like we went through this a lot with the microsoft images we had this raging debate with net images and separate repos all in one repo and yeah. drove everybody kind of nuts and everybody's pointing see what they do it's like everybody's just doing whatever the hell they want there's no standard that's like, like right. so we debated should we set a standard but we saw that with like different architectures and even the kube images are split in various ways and i is the question that should index to be able to support both or is just if we made the index tooling and just set the standard say hey if you're doing a foo that the architecture, the various architectures for would be in the same repo. And if we fix the index tooling, that people can do it easier and that pattern would just work. Well, I mean, I, I definitely, I don't think people want to run multiple repos. You know, if like, if there's some way to namespace within a repo, they still want one logical storage thing. They don't want to, you yeah. know, cause then that's going to be like some administrative operational overhead. Um, but if they can, you know logically separate out because because i mean most of this it just comes i mean a lot of it at least for me is it comes down to the tag it, it, it's not so much the you know the the actual digest um but it's it's for me it's, yeah it's, it's just mostly the the tag it's like if i if it was possible for a tag to be scoped to an architecture uh i i think that would 
alleviate like a lot of things. But again, you kind of go back to tooling because technically you can have a tag point to a specific, like if, and I have to double check what the latest thing we did with .NET was, but in the .NET ones, we did come up with like this standard that said, and I'm not trying to say that everybody should follow it. I'm just saying that the, the technology is there. Like you can have a tag for an architecture and we kind of had this thing like, you know, .NET Debian, yeah. blah, blah, blah version. And that was all in the, the tag. And then the index would still point to the underlying digest. But the interesting thing is, I think what you're kind of getting at is because there's no great tooling for the whole thing, and an index points at digest, doesn't it, it doesn't pay attention to tags, that you can easily get your tag and your index, your tag for a specific architecture, and the multi-arc index out of sync because you have to make sure that these are all manually assembled every time. Yeah, yeah, it's really, yeah, it's really easy to mess that up. But the, so that was like, so when I, I first brought this up on Twitter or whatever was that I made the comments like, I don't, you know, I don't even know if this is a spec issue, you know, it's like, but even if it's a client runtime issue, it's like they're, you know, it's like developing some standard of how to, how to do this. So I don't know if necessarily the spec needs to change or if everyone or like clients need to like agree on some standard or something. Um, I think it's just tooling because from a spec perspective, all the pieces are there. Like if, if you had tooling, because to your point and, and your point about building and multiple architectures and multiple build environments is an excellent one because you're basically building these things even, and just because you build one, like day zero, right? You're building all four or six architectures and you have to build them on separate environments or they're just built asynchronously. You want to push them individually, but then at the end, and you want to push them probably with a specific tag but then you want to be able to say, all right, now I want an index. I know what the tags are. Can I use some tooling where I pass the four tags to this thing, specify what I want the index to be tagged and just figure out what the digest are and make it all happen. And then if I want to update one of those, I can you know, kind of roll that update forward too. I guess I'm just getting the spec is in, is yeah. supports all of that flexibility. Yeah, I mean, so I don't think Darren, I mean, manifest tool does exactly that. I mean, you tell it which images you want to assemble and the final tag. Uh, I think two two kind of key things that came out of your, what you shared, Darren. I mean, one is that the development of multi-arc or multi-platform images happened iteratively while there was already an expectation for what certain tools did. So. Docker pull, you know, had a his history of what it did. And when we introduced manifest list, it hid, <clears throat> the engine hid the fact that it pulled this set of pointers and then made a decision for you based on the CPU architecture of your engines, you know, system. And then threw that away and, and basically reflected in all future commands, Docker run, Docker start, whatever. Yeah that you know you've now dereferenced to your local architecture uh and the digest has changed on you like for those yeah people, well the digest has, thing, yeah, they, they, yeah. They the representation the representation of it changed but I, oddly the digest doesn't change like i just tried this yesterday if you pull it says the digest of the manifest yeah when you right. do a docker images yeah it's weird yeah so so there's that sort of use case and and existence of tooling in container d we decided to to sort of go oci native and and still represent at least in the api you know that you are pulling an index and so we you can pull parts of it you can pull the whole thing you can push parts yeah. of it you can push the whole thing so it's a little bit of a swiss army knife that now you know when you embed container d you have to make that decision how you want to you know, represent your interaction with index uh, dereferencing, de for lack of a better term. Um, so I, you know, I get that. And I think that's mostly, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know what the solution is as far as, you know, Docker added the manifest experimental command that is is more the natural interface point to what is this thing and what are the parts of it. And how can I modify it? Docker pull and push have never necessarily changed to to reference that reality of manifest lists or indexes. 
So there's a bit of a disconnect there that I think is just a long ter long term like decision about how manifest sub command and pull push run should interact. Yeah, but so I but I just generally question what's the value of the manifest list. Yeah. So yeah, and I, I that was the second thing I meant to say, or I, I should have said it first. But you know the the whole impetus for the start of these ideas was you know, I'll skip IBM architectures, let's just talk ARM. You're an ARM enthusiast and you're following some online tutorial that says Docker run Alpine colon 3.7. Well, that doesn't work on ARM. So, you know, we had all kinds of ways to mess around with, oh, we'll add underscore ARM and we'll post the, the ARM variant of it over here with this tag name. Um, but you keep adding architectures, power and Z and, and whatever else is out there. Window, well, Microsoft came along at the same time. So now you have Windows images and some, you know, MySQL could, you know, Docker run MySQL could, can work on Windows. Um, so th that idea of we want one name representation for an image, somehow behind the scenes, you have to represent that that could be a very different image based on, you know, obviously on the binary requirements for the CPU architecture you're running on or platform. So, you know, there were two options. One is you, you hide all that behind a, a registry that now has to know about these details. And mm -hmm. you know, the, the design and decision was no, the registry should be a blob store. It shouldn't have to know these details because there were some early patches to the V1 registry that tried to play that game. Like, oh, I'll, I'll know your architecture and OS and I'll hand you what you want, um, yeah. which takes away all the problems that, that you know, are, are now on the packager to solve, you know, today. Um, so the other the other option is to find a way to and yeah I, I think I don't Tian I don't know if you have any great wisdom I mean he's been doing this for a couple of years now building all the official images multi arc and handling the the synchronization of building across a build farm and then doing the manifest list um, but yeah I, there's no magic there it's difficult. I, I would say that, Darren, you sound exactly like me three years ago. Some of the words you're saying are verbatim what I was saying three years ago. And then, then you learned better? And, no. Or you just accepted the world? <laughs> um, we, we just accepted that this is the world we live in and that we didn't have the power to influence that change three years ago. So we found workarounds. And we're yeah. not happy with them, to be clear. Yeah. So... I think um, I definitely agree with the idea like this should not be on the registry side. The registry should not be dynamic and trying to make a decision and giving you what you need. So I think the, the behavior should be in the client. I like that approach. Mm -hmm. To me, the, I kind of feel like it's kind of like we have a human issue of like, well, we want a human to be able to like just put in foo and I get the right thing. Um, so to me, like that's kind of, it falls in the realm of tags is like, I, I feel like there, there might be a, a solution that's more around attaching meta, metadata or scoping or so, because I don't think we should just do name mingling in tabs tags, because we already know there's multiple fields for an architecture, but if there was some way to have like kind of an enhanced version of a tag that has some metadata on it or whatnot, so I can say, okay, I want this tag for this architecture, and if that's not found, then I fall back to a different one. Because today a client kind of does that already with the manifest list of like, okay, well, I have this, inf like, I have this information from the manifest list. I have to pick what's the right one. So the, the clients already have kind of the behavior of picking the right one. But what I'm, what I'm saying is like, is, is basically instead of there's one thing tying that all together, it's still just like a logical name. And I know this, like when we get into signing, I don't know how any of this makes sense, but from like the kind of like the user experience and, and making the tools simpler and whatnot, I, I, it would make, you know, it's like basically when I create a tag and I push it, it just attaches the architecture 
to the tag. And then when I pull it, I, I try to find the tag that matches my architecture. Like, yeah. What, what if the, I mean, cause at the moment the pull works fine because it trickles through and the client knows what, I mean, are you kind of asking for the push to be the same where the registry you would in effect just create the manifest list for you from everything pointed at the same tag? So the only problem is the poll doesn't completely work when it doesn't you look completely at work, but it, it more, more or less. It, no, just it more, sorry. If, if in an image centric world, it works as long as if you didn't have to do any operations on the manifest. So if the registry could manage the manifest list creation for you automatically. So every time you pushed something with the same tag, it would create, it would add to the manifest list, say, hypothetically. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, if you dynamically. So, well, I was just saying, cause the only other problem with the poll is the, you know, it's kind of like, um, there's some loss of information, a lot of, you know, when you pull and then you tag and you push back, you know, what's, what's the right behavior there of what you actually want to tag the image. But it, yeah, I was kind of hypothesizing an image only world where you would always refer to the yeah. image, but the re like effectively there's something, the rest of it, the manifest list bit would be hidden from you and you'd only ever see image tags say. Correct. That would, yeah. So if like I could basically, tag an image and push that and well i guess when i push i say this is the is the architecture in the image i don't know um but like if if yeah if the server was able to know how to do that and then dynamically create the manifest um yeah one of one of the challenges here is that the manifest list or the indexes introduce the platform object that has os architecture variant and then also the the Windows yeah. version, right? The the kernel version, because that has to match as well. So there's not just a bucket for Windows. There's multiple buckets based on which Windows kernel you support. Where the the right. image object itself only has OS and architecture. It doesn't have a full platform object. Yeah, which is yeah. also a pain point. Yeah, that's that's why I'm like in my mind i was thinking like basically taking that platform object and somehow associating it to a tag um because yeah. can i jump in with a question uh so i like justin's image centric idea um i guess the one drawback i said what do we do in a world where we need to work with content from multiple different architectures on a single local client. Like what does, what do the images look like? How do we interact with them? Like that would have to change if not drastically, but it, we, like we would need some sort of local discriminator. Oh no, I want to actually work with this. I want to, I want to work with the ARM 64 bits and bytes for this particular operation as opposed to the AMD 64 or whatever it happens to be. Um, you know, how do we present those? How do we navigate that content? I, if it's the host, are you saying when the host can support multiples or are you saying when there's more generic tooling because you're trying to pull it down, not related to a Docker run kind of command? Right. Like you're just working with the content. Okay. I, yeah. I would say both because there are cases where a host can support multiples, especially say you have an ARM64 chip, like say the AWS ARM chips that can support ARM32 images and not just ARM32, but ARM32 v7, v6, and v5. So there are potentially four different image variants for the same image that you could run on that chip and might actually be useful and meaningful to run on that chip. Not to mention the QMU user mode emulation that um, Docker Desktop does by default, which opens up a whole larger world of possibilities. So I'm curious from those that are, that are building multi-arc images, because we, one of the things we found, at least for the, the Microsoft images, is that we had to publish the, the platform specific ones because people wound up with very weird scenarios when they went to the multi-arc for various reasons, including Windows. Like in ACR tasks, we actually had to 
we make sure we update those very regular to the within a week of the new Windows versions because if you use a multi arc and in the multi arc tag they put the new one and the host we saw this with DevOps doesn't support the new version it just breaks which is just broken and that's why I was like apologizing for on behalf of Windows but it is what it is the so what we the first thing we tell customers is like no actually you should pin to the specific one you want. But it's helpful. Like there are places where it's definitely helpful. It's kind of like there are, you know, as much as we bash on latest, having it available is helpful for like walkthroughs and so forth. So I'm curious for the one, for the people that are building the multi-arc ones, what do you find your, where do you find your customers use the multi-arc tag versus they actually want the platform specific one? In, in official images, the, the biggest place that we see users reaching for those platform specific tags is when their tooling has failed them because they're using Docker without experimental and thus can't use dash dash platform to explicitly specify to, to deambiguate the tags or where the platform detection has failed and they actually wanted something else or they're using something like the QMU user mode emulation and don't want to have to look up the manifest list to find the digest of the particular architecture that they're actually interested in running. But for, for us, we ended up with the, the platform specific image tags. We have a separate repo for each architecture we push, both because it's useful for users, but also as a quirk of how we have to push manifest lists. Because we're doing exactly what Darren described of each architecture has its own pipeline that's totally divorced of all the other pipelines, because that's the, the easiest way for us to manage our disparate infrastructure and the number of images that we support concurrently. And we needed some way to, to reference those individual tags after the fact in a consistent way so that we could construct the manifest list. Because if, if we just did something clever like push by digest to the correct repo, we then don't have somewhere persistent to store that digest so that we can construct the manifest list later. Unless we created a unique tag for each architecture combination, which at that point we're bloating the tags of the official repo instead of hiving those off elsewhere, which is why we went with individual repo per architecture. Okay, so you went to the individual repos just because the tag listing was becoming too complex? Well, that and because it, it made it simpler, there's, there's a one-to-one -one mapping. If you, you, you can always go to an official image and know that if, if you want a particular architecture of that image, you just add the name of the repo architecture specific repo to the beginning and it will be yeah. the exact same tag and it will just work. <clears throat> so we, I like just ran and killed our CI um, for an issue related to this, this is my own problem, but it just shows a complexity is that we do the opposite of, you know, we put the architecture in the tag, but the software version is the tag version. And, but it gets confusing because, well, the tag of the image for the specific uh, one we're building is actually the software version plus the architecture, but then the manifest list is the software version so so like different stages of our ci pipeline the the tag equals the software version or, or the or the the you know or not you know like it might have so it's like you know it's very easy to screw up so it's like i, I kind of appreciate how you did it with the different docker repos putting it for architectures because you can keep that tag consistent um that makes a lot of things much easier because, um, you know, it switches in our case and we mess it up all the time. Yeah, we, I mean, just, we struggled with that also. And then we were trying to get a good formatting in the output. And I, I put some, I pasted some things in there to try to help with at least where we wound up on it was, because we just felt like the multiple, the .NET team at one point had everything in one repo, including the SDKs and the run times and the, uh, the, the, the build dependencies and everything. And it was just this monstrous list. And then there was this, no, let's go the opposite direction. And we were trying to figure out what the right balance was. Um, yeah. But but yeah, I mean, it, it definitely makes things, I mean, like those of us who do this quite a lot have trouble with it. God help the people who are just trying to 
yeah. do it with a couple of repos and just generally build stuff for arm that's i think that's part of the problem with this it's like yeah it, it, you it's manageable like we all we all build multi arch images and and live and hate and get annoyed by it occasionally but it works but I, I, yeah I, I definitely agree that not everyone in the world is able to build yeah. for arm too hard it, uh, yeah and i and i think well and and the reason why i kind of started chiming up about this was just because honestly like I'm super impressed with ARM64, the speed of it these days, you know, like the Graviton 2 and stuff like that. And and, and it's becoming actually more feasible for me to run cheaper on ARM. But it's just a pain to, to build all these images. And I don't want to, like, if it was easier for me to build multi-arc images, um, then I can move more of my infrastructure over to ARM. And then there's the impending Mac OS, you know, ARM64 thing, which I don't know how it will work out. You mean Apple Silicon, right? Yes, of course. Of course Apple Silicon. <laughs> it's not ARM. <laughs> like. um, but, but so the thing is, like when I look at this, is like no matter how you're doing this, let's say you're signing, you're tagging, whatever, you're always going to do the architecture-specific one. So it's like I always have architecture-specific tags, and then I pull those tags together to then create the manifest list. Um, so, you know, unless you're building everything in one spot, but I, that just doesn't seem very feasible um, for a lot of a lot of use cases, whatever. So I keep kind of going back to that. It's like it, it seems like there's something you can do with with just putting um, the architecture on the tag. But I don't I honestly don't even know what the API and the structure looks like, or if even if that's in your guys' realm. <laughs> the, yeah, I'm still kind of hearing it's a tool like, i'm not trying to oversimplify say it's mm -hmm. a tooling issue it's just that simple because it's clearly a big pain point but i i and especially with the experimental flag where you can pass in the the disambiguation issue of uh, which architecture to pull it seems like darren what do you like what have you seen from the from the in the multi-arc places where you're pulling with containerd is that part resolved and it really is just the tooling on what you do for push and update Well, hmm, let me think about that. Oh, sorry. I was actually talking. I, I said Darren. I meant Derek. I, oh, okay. Not that you should answer as well, but I was, I, I realized. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, we, we, we tried to solve it in container D by always preferring the, the digest of either the index or the manifest, whatever was, was received from the registry. So try to be like less opinionated. Um, Docker not matching is kind of complicated. And you know, I spent some time trying to fix some of those backend issues, but that was never uh, never merged back. So like, I, yeah, I would like to, like I, I, I'm, I'm very aware of like what the issues are related to Docker and that if you pull and push something that has the, the architectures that get stripped. But with Containerd, we, basically had to build up this whole platform matcher and windows definitely made it more complicated than just like simple, like string matching. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of complicated, but yeah, we definitely want to know like if using the container D interface is really hard. Like we definitely know there's like usability issues. Like if you were to pull and then try to push, but you only pulled one architecture. Uh, we've tried to work around that through stuff like cross repository push, but that doesn't work too well if you're going to a different, a completely different registry. And yeah, it's, it's it it does make the the client tooling more complicated. Um, but yeah, I would definitely like to know like what part of that we can make better. But pulling is actually a much simpler problem here. Building is really, really the yeah. hard part. Yeah, as long I, as somebody didn't screw up and push. The a latest and overwrite the the platform specific one. Yeah, I I can. Because I I don't know how you can easily solve this with tooling, with like. Without the user always having to assemble, the manifest list. Is that not the right name? Is it called index? Oh, well, it's, it's called name? both. There's the Docker manifest list. There's the OCI index. Uh, okay. Same thing. Depends on where yeah. you look. Yes. I mean, tomato. tomato. 
so the, so the problem is is I mean, it, and we you have to kind of accept the reality because like because the, the other thing is like well we say it's a tooling issue is like for better or for worse Docker is really the only tool that the majority of people are, are interacting interacting with like um, Container D you know as much as I love Container D will probably not really make its way to the most end users you know it's 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 much more lower level runtime um so but but even if you know i just don't know you know if you say it's just a tooling issue of how how do i actually fix this um without just basically trying to build a better manifest tool but still fundamentally the manifest tool has kind of the problems of you know i need to basically pull down a manifest I ag augment it and push it back um which is difficult to automate uh, and can't be done atomically yeah yeah and because like we we don't like because i know some people are are have accepted and they're like oh fine i'll just always amend and they're fine with that from our perspective we don't do that I, like I, i'm not going to amend a manifest list i'm only going to push it once um you know maybe that we're we're too pure there or something but 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 that makes it a lot harder and and the only way we get a, a we can really easily do that is with consistent tagging um because we we just basically know because we, we don't actually know what the digests are we have to we yeah. Know, so we, yeah i mean so i mean that that aspect of it i mean tnon actually contributed or suggest i forget which but you know the the manifest tool uh, usage, um, you can say, hey, I want these five architectures, they're going to be named this, uh, but fail if they don't all exist already in the registry. And so that gives you the option. I mean, it's sure it's it's ugly in that you end up polling or, you know, retrying until it works. Uh, Tianon ended up adding a succeed if not exist and so but that's the amend option you don't actually have to pull and edit you just keep pushing and if there's more available you get a new manifest list that has more entries the um, problem with the problem with that uh, we just covered uh, with things like official images is that sometimes a bunch you do docker run ubuntu latest and it fails because only arm yeah. has been pushed and you're on x86 and you can no longer run ubuntu latest which makes people very unhappy <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah so, uh, yeah, yeah. I just I think I think the the distribution API here. I mean, I think very early on we kind of established that the, the distribution API is kind of eventually consistent in nature. You, it's not really a good place to like uh, try to do atomic operations. Um, but I I think I think maybe there's there's some room here where we could add something in the future to the distribution API to at least making the creation of the, the manifest list slash the index easier. Um, maybe even having like a separate endpoint that could handle like creation of it from multiple tags that like atomically like remove those tags and replace them or something. Um, kind of like update, but, like here's the AMD 64, please update any index that references this tag or something like that. The Maven so, world does that with artifacts, right? You can upload various different, um, I forget what they call it, but it's essentially like a suffix that allows you to accumulate more and more yeah. bits, whether it's architecture specific. And then you've got this- Qualifier. Yeah. Uh, and, then you, and then I guess what it's missing is the opportunity to, to, uh, to lock it, to prevent further data from accumulating. But, you know, there, there is prior art. But, but I still fundamentally go back to, it's like, we know this introduced some complexity you can try to overcome it with tooling and whatnot. But I still can't really justify its existence. It's like, you know, I know man, like index probably useful for other OCI artifact things of like, I actually want to create more of a bundle of artifacts. Like that seems interesting. But in this use case, I don't know what we're exactly yeah like this specific design like like what it gains us or whatever well is it 
so from a consumer, well, that's the part is that uh, Tian was kind of referring to, I think it was Tian or maybe it was Jacob. It's like, when it, when it works, like if you're able to get it work and you know, you've got a good index, then for certain scenarios, the pull is actually kind of clean because it just works. It figures it out. Like if I'm trying to ship an accounting software package yeah, yeah. and um, so as with many of these things that we optimize on the consumer side, the problem is it sounds like we're getting in, there's enough edge cases in the consumer side that even there it's frustrating, but, um, and that's what I think is like, if we made the tool, it's not that you're so frustrated with the tooling, you're kind of questioning the consumption. And I, we, and again, I, I totally get it. I'm not saying you're wrong. I mean, there are aspects to the way it works today that I think, I mean, sure, I guess you can go back to the drawing board with new solutions, but Helm charts, default Kubernetes YAML files, all these things reference image names that are multi-arch. So Istio just runs on our, you know, you can install yeah. it on any Kubernetes cluster. So you, if you don't solve it this way, you have to solve that some other way because you can't, yeah, yeah. people aren't gonna accept, I, I got a, Download a different YAML file for PowerPC and a different one for x86. And totally agree. Yeah, I don't like use WebAssembly or something terrible. <laughs> yeah, but but I'm but I'm but honestly, it's like what what it really comes down to is, and, you know, and I, I definitely don't want to push anything more on the user. What, what I'm saying is the actual solution or whatever, is it is it really just you know comes down to like, basically, a, you know, a dirty solution is a convention in the name. You know, it's like that's how we did multi arc before um we did multi-arc before uh manifest list became a reality was you know in platforms where we could just intercept the call from the user we just inter you know put in a an architecture in there but then um, it doesn't work like the helm scenarios where i just want to reference something and it it figures it out like there's certain images that really do benefit otherwise then they have to do some kind of convention it's just like at some point you have to rephrase that if you are trying to reference multiple things with one name, and I'm air quoting name, then there has to be some solution. Either there's an embedded thing in the way the index works, or there's a convention that gets slapped on after the fact. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think like the the solution I'm proposing is to basically uh, embed more metadata on the tag, so you know the tag doesn't. So the user still uses the same name always, but the runtime can know that that tag is not actually which would then mean you can actually have ta multiple tags of the same name, like with different, um, uh, or whatever. I mean, I don't know exactly how to be implemented, but, but that's the point is that like, th it's, you know, it's kind of like name mingling, but you do it in a proper data structure. Um, but I mean, I've... because the, the fundamental difference I'm just saying is that you don't tie one artifact, which then refers to everything. That's where I can't seem to, in my mind, get, get to a better solution is where I always need to create one artifact, which then points to all the others. I think, I mean, I, I think that's kind of where Justin was heading with, I mean, it definitely would impact. I don't, I don't think it has to change anything about how indexes manifest configs, all those sort of spec specked out pieces of, of how these things are represented. But I mean, it almost sounds like you're saying distribution API, could be augmented to accept more information and therefore I could docker push the same image name, same tag, but with this additional information, I could let the registry handle the, the whole concept of indexes behind the scenes. Well, basically uh, the registry, well, the, only, the tooling part of it is what I'm kind of hearing. But if, the, the only yeah, complexity that, with that is, is the, is it's, is then like, what's the digest that you're dealing with is the deep, like, because you have an intermediate digest of, you know, because you're you're still you're basically going to dynamically be building some new uh, manifest list or index. Um, so you still have the complexities of like deciding what to do from the client and runtime perspective of yeah, keep yeah, that but throw I, it away. I mean, but we accepted that, you know, apt and RPM have to deal with that as well. I mean, they have to they have to have enough smarts to know. Oh, I should actually go. Yeah, it's the same name package as everyone else, but oh, I'm on x86, so I'm going to this repo to get that. And so there is, I mean, it's not the same. I understand. Yeah, it's not. no, because I'm saying there's actually this artifact that 
that exists you know so it'd be one thing if like basically the um i guess maybe the uh yeah it would be one thing i guess if maybe the the index always lived on the registry and was never pulled i mean it was never like stored as an asset you would never really see that digest um because that that's you know kind of part of the complexity today is that you have an additional layer and it's kind of shown to the user um yeah i mean to me that's that's maybe a smaller issue i mean if we need a different visibility level so to speak about yeah. how these things operate that's that's kind of a minor it, it would mean you could never pull by digest um, um, multi arch, oh, right, right, right. which is a feature that you do have now, I guess. Yeah. That's the only. That's the only difference. But um, that, but which you don't get um, on Debian. Say, I mean, there's no kind of equivalent of that. I mean, the Debian thing is just a part, an additional path component for the architecture at the beginning that you don't see. In effect, well, well, which you 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 could definitely do as a as a kind of registry convention that all registries start AMD 64 slash and then everyone gets their namespaces for that and things. I mean, it, or Windows slash AMD 64 slash Justin Cormac slash thing and they all get pre-populated for you, but it's a... So just from a time check, I mean, this is good. It's really good. Like we've been bantering around this for a long time. It, I think like, I don't know if there's an entity that is listening and taking all the notes saying, okay, I've got this, I'll go fix it all. Like this yeah. has become a typical OSS project where Phil's got some great tooling in place. Docker's got the Docker manifest tool. Is there some energy that somebody wants to take this on and, and fix it, you know, but kind of like become the, 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 the lead on, on this and run with it. Who's got the bandwidth, the interest. <laughs> hey Jacob. Um, so, I mean, in terms of if it like comes down to like to uh, work and coding and implementing, uh, we can definitely do that. In terms of design and what's the right approach, uh, I don't know how to go go about that. We just get some breakout groups, like we've been doing at some other things. It's the the problem with the problem isn't so much the breakout groups. The problem has been. There's lots of people with lots of ideas. Who's got the bandwidth to actually start committing, whether it be Markdown or, or Go files or whatever? And like Phil's got some great tooling in place. You know, it might be it might be the right start. I don't. I actually, I'm ashamed to say, I don't know that well. Um, you know, so it, can it be somebody that hey jumps on what he's got and starts saying hey look this is what we're thinking and then people are reviewing things. But it's at the end of the day, it's who wants to take it and who ac and actually can run it through to its end. Yeah. But I think we'd all um, like it, but we'd all love to see this get better. It's just, where is it fit on our priority list of where everybody is working on? We're, so we're here to support you, man. <laughs> it sounds to me like the lowest hanging fruit is actually adding that platform object to the image specification. Is it already there? I'm just checking my code and I'm seeing a platform object in the index descriptor. Yeah, but in the index, yes, but not in the image specification. Ah. Manifest. You mean in manifest itself? Yeah, so it's today the config object has an OS and an arch, I think. But that's it. So it doesn't fully map the full platform in the image. Mm. So if, say, you, you have a manifest list, it specifies a platform object, and you then resolve that platform object to an individual image, you have now lost details of configuration that only exist in that manifest list object because that platform object contains details that don't exist in the image config. Oh, so they got out of sync a little bit. Yep. Yeah, I, I think the config doesn't have OS version, at least. Was that the Windows thing? We fix that somewhere in like build kit or something as well. Yeah, it's, I think yeah, Docker adds it. That's yeah, off spec though. Yeah, it's not an OCI level. And yeah, it that's doesn't have the... I'm not seeing OS version, OS features, and variant in the image. 
Ja. Ja. Well, so, I say, I say Tiana is the most experienced with manifest lists, so he probably, he probably wants to get involved. You just did, yeah. did you just volunteer him? Is that what I was trying to get Darren to volunteer? <laughs> I mean, if, if Darren's in, I, I will absolutely have as many conversations with Darren as he can stand to sit through. I, I mean, I, yeah. So, like, I, um, I would like to volunteer. I'm trying, trying to think of, like, I'd, um, yeah, I mean, if we can, John, if, if I, I mean, maybe we can have some type of follow-up discussion or something um, on, on what seems what seems feasible. I don't, I don't know. So I, you know, I, I think that the hard thing is just uh, for me trying to come to like what I, what a solution is. I can, I can just mostly complain to what are the, what are the issues? So, but maybe we can get there. Yeah, as I'm probably one of the most impacted by this, by the guy that does the Illumo stuff, which is another OS, I would also like to join and help out whatever I can. I'm, I'm interested in helping as well. I, I, I'm taking accountability of typing your names. <laughs> all right <laughs> at least okay, we right. have some notes that are written in addition to the recording um but anyway i think we'd all love to see it it's just a matter of like the, a divide and conquer thing and i um i'm sure you'll get you know constructive feedback from others um so just run with it mm -hmm. okay cool all right, I got to run to the next, I will, uh, so we're just as a point of order or whatever it's called, we're off next week because we all have KubeCon because of all these backgrounds and we'll pick up the following week and um, hope we can we'll discuss see. the items on the agenda that were yours that we've missed today. <laughs> oh, right. and Josh, yeah, we can, we can pick it up following. I'm, I'm sure there'll be some content, but I'm hoping, you know, as if I understand it right, Justin, we're going to be on like a chat session with a whole bunch of people have a whole bunch of questions. So I'm hoping the people that are on this will join in, answer all the other people. As many questions as we have, you can just imagine all the other people have even more questions. So hoping you guys can help jump on chat sessions and help others out as well. Yeah, I, I, the links outside of KubeCon because I'm not in the whole thing there. How does that work? And Amy's gone. Let me ask Amy what that looks like. Um, for those that are, so basically what I'm hearing is a bunch of you aren't officially at KubeCon, so you don't know how to get in. Yeah. Okay. Let me poke around and see if there's some back door. <laughs> okay. Unofficial back door. Wait, it's recorded. Anyway, all right. I'll see you guys later. Uh, yep. See you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, yeah. Darren, for the time. Really. Yep. Well, yeah. Thank you.